Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I have a very special cake recipe for you guys. I'll be sharing my classic version of Tort Napoleon. Now, if you've never had this incredible cake, you are in for a real treat. It's made with 12 layers of buttery crispy puff pastry and it's frosted and filled with a creamy vanilla custard. And I'm gonna garnish the top with a little bit of chocolate and some strawberries. Now this cake is just one of my all time favorites and especially in the Eastern European and Russian community, you have to have this cake. It's at every single celebration, wedding party, you name it, it's definitely gonna be there. And what's really fun about this recipe is it's actually one of the very first cake recipes I ever shared on my channel like six years back and then I made this cake a few weeks ago and I was like, I really need to share an updated version with you guys. So today I'm doing just that. Now the easiest way to make the puff pastry dough is to use a food processor or like a big bowl and a pastry cutter. This just makes things super, super easy. And I have one and three fourths cup of unsalted butter and I cubed it into smaller pieces and then I placed it into the freezer for about 10, 15 minutes. You want the butter to be super, super cold. And I have five and a half cups of all purpose flour. And since the five and a half cups of flour takes up quite a bit of space in the food processor, I'm actually going to split this into two batches. So add half the flour and add half the butter. And then pulse the butter and flour together for a few minutes until the mixture resembles fine crumbs. And now for my wet ingredients, I've measured out two thirds cup of cold water. To that, I'm going to add in three tablespoons of vodka. Then we're gonna add in one tablespoon of vinegar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and two eggs. Now you could technically make it without the vodka. You could just add three tablespoons of water, but then you have to be really careful not to overmix the dough. And just whisk this all together. I'll make a well in the center of my flour and butter mixture and then pour in the liquids. And then to combine the two together, I like to start with a spatula, kind of work in that flour and then once a dough starts to form, I'll switch over to my hands and kind of knead everything together. Now you don't need to knead this dough as you would like a yeast dough for a pizza or bread. Just mix it enough so that the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients are well combined and you don't have any crumbs of flour. Once you have your dough shaped, it's time to divide it into 12 equal pieces. And I like to use a little scale to make sure that each piece weighs the same. But once you have the dough divided equally into 12 pieces, just roll each piece into a ball and then place it onto a tray. And then we're going to place the dough into the refrigerator, allow it to chill for at least 30 minutes. If you have an hour, let it stay there for an hour. That way it'll be easier to roll out. And then meanwhile, while we're letting the dough chill, we're going to make the vanilla custard. For my custard, I've measured out a quarter cup of cornstarch. To that, I'll add in a quarter cup of water. Give that a good mix. Make sure that cornstarch is completely combined with the water. And I'm going to add the cornstarch slurry to a large bowl containing six egg yolks and add two thirds cup of white granulated sugar. And then I'll grab a whisk and whisk this vigorously for about two to three minutes until I have a creamy mixture. I'm going to set aside my egg yolk and sugar mixture and then into a large pot I'm going to add in three cups of whole milk and two tablespoons of flour. Give that a whisk and then I'm going to take this over to the stovetop and cook it over medium heat until the milk is steaming hot but not boiling. And once the milk is heated, I'm slowly going to temper that with the egg yolk and sugar mixture. Just add a little bit at a time and then give it a good whisk after each addition. and then pour this mixture back into the pot. And I'm going to cook this custard over medium low heat, scraping the bottom of the pot with a rubber spatula at all times. You wanna cook this for about eight to 10 minutes until the custard thickens, takes on a pudding-like consistency. And while you're cooking your custard, if it gets any clumps, just grab your whisk, give it a good whisk so there aren't any clumps, 
And you'll want to cook it until it holds its shape really well on the back of your spatula. Just run a spoon through it, and that looks perfect. I'm going to take my custard off the stovetop and add in one cup of unsalted butter and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then give this a whisk until that butter is completely melted. And my butter is completely melted. This custard already smells so, so good. I'm going to cover the pan with a lid and then let this cool completely at room temperature. Meanwhile, we're going to get started on our dough. I have my oven preheating to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and today I'm going to use two silicone mats. This is the easiest way to roll out um, the layers. So what I like to do is once I take the dough out of the fridge, just kind of soften each ball into a disc and I work with two pieces at a time. And I'm gonna make eight inch circles and they fit perfectly onto this mat. Grab a rolling pin and roll the dough out. And working with the cold dough is gonna take just a little bit longer to kind of uh, work with it and roll it out, but it's really important that the dough remains cold because once it hits the oven, if it's too warm, it's actually going to shrink and you're gonna have these tiny little layers so keeping it nice and cold is going to help prevent that. I have an eight inch round of parchment paper. I'm going to place that over the dough. Just grab a sharp knife, cut around, and you wanna leave these little scraps on the silicone mat. We're gonna bake those as well. Grab a fork, pierce this all over, and then I'm gonna transfer the silicone mat onto a baking sheet. Bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about eight to 10 minutes. You want the layers to be golden brown. While my first two layers are baking, I'm going to get started on the next two, and I'm gonna set this tray back into the refrigerator and keep this dough chilled while I'm baking the other layers. And now it's time to assemble the torta napoleon. So I have all 12 cake layers baked. They're completely cooled. I've saved the scraps from the side. We're going to crush these later and then garnish the outside of the cake. And then for soaking the cake layers, I've prepared a cup of uh, black tea, sweetened black tea. I'm going to use a pastry brush to soak the layers. And then I have my custard cream completely cooled. So I'm gonna take the black tea and just lightly kind of brush it over each layer. Top each layer with a generous amount of cream. Spread it evenly to the edges. And now for the traditional torte napoleon garnish, you wanna take the scraps from the puff pastry, put them into a Ziploc bag, grab a rolling pin and crush them into fine crumbs. And then I'll take those crumbs and gently press them into the side of the cake. And you wanna do this before you place your cake into the refrigerator before that custard sets. That way they'll stick better. And this cake is ready to go into the refrigerator. I'm going to let it chill in the fridge overnight. Then we'll come back tomorrow to add some chocolate and strawberries on top and slice into it so you can see all the beautiful layers. I have let my torte napoleon set in the refrigerator overnight and then I took it out about an hour ago to allow the custard and some of the layers to soften up. Now it's time to garnish the cake. I have some melted dark chocolate and some fresh strawberries. I don't wanna do anything uh, too crazy with this cake. Just a simple garnish is all that it needs. And now for the most exciting part about baking, time to cut into this cake and enjoy it. And I want you guys to check out all the incredible layers on the inside. 
And how stunning does that look, guys? Check out all those layers of custard and puff pastry. This is going to taste so incredible. And that's it for my Torte Napoleon recipe. I absolutely love how it turned out. It's just such a classic cake in the Eastern European and Russian cuisine. You guys are going to love everything about this cake. Time to dig in and enjoy. I just love all the layers here. Mmm. I love everything about this cake from the sweet vanilla custard to those buttery flaky puff pastry layers and how they all come together to form an absolutely incredible cake. If you've never tried Torta Napoleon, you are definitely missing out. This is such an incredible cake. It's not too sweet and it goes perfect with a cup of coffee or tea. For the full recipe, just head on down into the video description box. I'll have that recipe up on my blog. Hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and I'll see you next time.